Hey, boys and girls, welcome back. Today is Tuesday, February the 16th, and we've had a long weekend. I'm sure we probably all needed it. We were not here yesterday for President's Day, but we're back and we're ready to start another day of Number Corner, where we will look at our calendar grid, update our calendar collector, and then finally go over those word problems that I told you that you should be working on. Um, independently if you can and some of you stayed with me and we talked through how to chunk writing equations for pieces of the um, question. So let's start with our calendar grid. Um, let's look at all the uh, all of the calendar markers from Saturday on since today's Tuesday. Let's just see what's happening with our um, pattern or if there is even a pattern. We went from adding 45 degrees to now having a line segment to adding a line segment each day. So we had one line segment, two, and now three which made a shape. So what do you assume today's or the 13th would have looked like? Maybe a square. What? By golly me, it's just another line segment. Interesting. Well, what about the 14th? Hmm, two line segments. So the 15th might be another triangle. Let's see. Yeah, it is. But this time it's a different type of triangle because none of the sides are equal. And then we are at today's calendar marker. But before we do that, let's update the 13th, 14th, and 15th on our observation chart before we do the 16th. So um, the 13th was when we just had one um line segment. Just a line segment. So number of lines, one. Angle in the figure, there are none. And we're going to call this a line segment again because that's exactly what it is. And then we know that we had two here. And we had one angle. And this time, what type of angle is it? It is an obtuse angle. Obtuse means it's bigger than 90 degrees. Then we had to name the figure, and we'll just call it an obtuse angle. Next, we have the 15th, which is a triangle, so we still have three line segments. We have, hmm, how many acute angles here? We know that this one is obtuse, so now we have two acute and one obtuse angle. Do y'all know what this type of triangle is called? called a scaling triangle because none of the sides are equal. So that makes me wonder, what is today's calendar marker going to look like? Let's see. I'm thinking it's just going to be one line segment. And it is one line segment. So I'm going to fill that in. One, we have no angles and it is just a line segment. So it seems to me that we do have a pattern going and maybe we're just looking at the different types of triangles. I guess we'll have to continue to look to see for sure. Now let's update our calendar collector. Let's spin for today. We were at 153 degrees. Oh my goodness. Now we are just adding one more degree. So that gives us 154. So I'm just going to Make another straight line here, and it's getting kind of hard to do that because one degree angles are like crazy small, crazy small, Real, like barely even a rotation. And I can update that on my recording sheet as well, which is here. We collected another degree, which is one one degree angle, and now we are sitting at 154 degrees. All right really close to one of those straight angles. We'll see if we'll get there if we spin at 30 degrees tomorrow. We'll be past the straight angle, actually. All right, now to go over our workbook page. Do you remember when we talked about this the other day? Multi-step story problems with equations. So those of you who stayed with me, you, we've done all the things that I've already filled out together, but you are still supposed to write the full equation and solve the problem. So that's what we're going to talk about together today. 
Okay, so we got Tyson and his sister. They're collecting items for an animal shelter. They want to donate 150 items. Six packs of cat food with 12 cans in each pack. Um, eight boxes of toys with seven toys in each pack. How many more items do they need to collect? So we know we got to do six times 12 and then eight times seven first. Watch what I'm going to do with my equation. I'm going to use um, some double, what I would call a double parenthesis. We got six times seven, or excuse me, six times 12, plus we need to add that to um, our eight times seven. So we gotta do all of that first. And then whatever we're left with, we gotta add it to how much more we need to collect, which is gonna give us 150. That is one of the equations that we could have done. Just one of them. We could also have written this. Did any of you do this? 150 minus, and I'm still gonna use my double brackets here um, because I need to make sure I'm adding the six times 12 and eight times seven together. And that's why I'm using double parentheses here. You guys will be seeing some double parentheses and extra stuff going on, especially when you hit fifth grade. It's gonna equal what we have left to collect. So, what do we have left to collect? What is 150? Well, let's start here. Six times 12 is, yeah, six times 12 is 72. So we have 72. And then eight times seven is 56. What is 72 plus 56? We know we gotta add that first because it is in the brackets, in the parentheses. <clears throat> Six plus two is eight, and then 70 plus 50 is 120. So now I need to do 150 minus 128. So what did you get? All right. You should have gotten, I'm hoping you got 22. And we said about 30 more items. So we were really close in our estimate. Or maybe you had a different estimate. But those of you who worked with me, that's what we came up with together. So that's number one. Let's go over number two and then we will be done for today. All right. So Zoe has some cupcakes. It's a rectangular array of 8 by 12. She wants to serve them to 32 people who are at the party. How many cupcakes can each person have? So if you were to have written an equation for this problem first, which probably is the best thing to do before you solve it so you actually know what you're doing, then it would look maybe something like this. 8 times 12 or, let me back up, 32 divided by... 8 times 12. So we know we need to do 8 times 12 first. And I did it backwards again. Miss Tramel, shame on you. 8 times 12 and then divide that into the 32 people. Because remember we talked about having equal groups. And that's going to tell us how many cupcakes they can have. Alright? So what is 8 times 12? 8 times 12 is 96. Let me rewrite that nine. <laughs> okay, eight times 12 is 96 because eight times 10 is 80 and eight times two is 16. 16 plus 80 is 96. And we're gonna divide that into 32 groups. And we're trying to figure out how many in each group. Well, how in the world are we gonna do this? So here's what I'm gonna suggest. We know we have 96 um, total and we want it to be shared with 32 people. So that means 96 is in this space right here. Yes? Okay. So let's take out one group of 32. Let's just do some repeated subtraction until we can figure out the answer. 96 minus 32 is, 6 minus 2 is 4, 90 minus 30 is 60, so now we have 64, which is more than half, so I'd probably draw my line about here, and that's my first 32. That's one. 
Now we have 64 left over. Okay, can we take another 32? We sure could. We could com continue to subtract 32 until it was all gone. But maybe you guys recognize that 64 minus 32 is 32. So if I were to cut that in half again, here's my another one, another one, or maybe you just did two, then guess what? Our answer is here. So actually, they get three cupcakes each. Three cupcakes each. Imagine that. It's a lot of cupcakes, but it's kind of making me want cupcakes right now. So maybe I should stop talking about cupcakes. Um, one other question before we move on. This whole time when we've been talking about solving problems, our focus has been on equations to match a story problem. And then the fact that when you see parentheses, you do that first. So I am going to write a problem for you. Um, I'll just do it. I'll just write it up here. And I want you to solve for it. And we're going to talk about the difference, okay? So I have 8. And I'm going to do plus 3 times 2 equals, we're just going to call it M for now. I want you to solve that really quickly. And then I want you to solve this one. 8 plus 3 times 2 equals M. Take a moment and solve it. If you need to pause this video, please do so. All right, what do we get for the very first equation? M is going to end up equaling it equals 14. Why? Because you do 3 times 2 first. What's in parentheses happens first. 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 plus 8 is 14. Well, what about what do you get for M when you solve the second problem? Ah, you get 22. Why? Yeah, because you solve what's in the parentheses first, which is 8 plus 3, and that's 11, and then we multiply it by 2. I'm wondering, can you write a story problem to match at least one of these equations? Can you try it? We're almost done. I'll give you an example. I had um, hmm, eight dollars in my savings account and I made three dollars for two weeks um, delivering newspapers how much money do I now have that makes sense right it matches this one because I would do the multiplication first since I had my eight dollars stored away and then I'm talking about 3 times 2 because I'm getting $3 for 2 weeks. So that's 3 plus 3, essentially, or 3 times 2. It's going to give me 14. Now you try. If you need some time to think about it, pause the video and write it down. Here's my suggestion for um, the second one. I had 8 crayons. I added... Um, three more crayons to what I had and then somebody came in and doubled how many crayons I had. Now how many crayons do I have? Or I should say markers since we have M. I had eight markers, I found three more and then someone came in and doubled it. Do you see the difference? This month we worked so hard with solving problems, complex problems too, multi-step board problems where you have to do different operations and use some parentheses so we know what happens first. You've done a great job this month. I don't think we have any more word problems to do, but we will be doing a problem string very soon. You guys have a great rest of your Tuesday. I will see you on Monday or Wednesday. Silly me.